John, you know, can you come here with your mum? Just sit down there and chat. Hi. Good evening. Good. And I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm Becky. I'm going to be chairing tonight's panel. This is my colleague Chris. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we're both members of the community. Um, so we're, we're trained by the Youth Justice Service, and of course Paul um, yeah. is the uh, yacht worker here today. Okay, do you want to introduce yourself to me? My name's John Doe. And who have you brought with you? I've brought my mum. My name's Enid Doe, I'm John's mum. Okay, to introduce you've met the victim before, this is uh, Tom Roberts, and the victim liaison office Steve. My name's Steve Moore. Okay. okay. Um, before we start, I just want to mention that everything we say in this room is private and confidential. Um, we will respect everybody in this room and everyone that's going to get the opportunity to have something to say. Okay? Right. Is he in your writing? I'm just making a few notes. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're here tonight. You've been, you've been to the courts and you've pleaded guilty for theft. And the courts have awarded you a four month referral order. Do you understand what a referral order is? I think so, yeah. What do you think it is? I think it's, is it like a series of meetings that, uh, like a youth justice worker that like, will help me to make amends and... That's it, uh, put back harm in the course with the community. Yes. Um, as part of the referral order we give you reparation um, and then you have to sit and have your meetings with the yacht officer. But we'll discuss today um, what we'll put into the contract. Um, so we'll write up a contract, so we'll go through what we've agreed, and if you're happy with it, you'll sign it, and then we'll start your order. So can I ask what happened? Well, we was just like, because uh, normally we'll, like, sometimes we'll have a like, look about some scrap, you know, like, all the other morning metal, we'll make a few quid. And we were walking down this back alley, and we saw these car batteries, and so it's like, oh yeah, look at them, and we thought, yeah, these could be worth a bit of money. They didn't look like they were part of the garage, but they obviously were. And as we were taking the batteries, um, Mr. Roberts came out and started shouting, so I ran off and got caught by the policeman. And then, obviously, you know the rest. I went to court, I had an interview and that. I went to court and got this referral. Okay, and what was going through your head at the time? I uh, just wanted to make some money. Like I didn't think, oh yeah, these could be like from there. I just thought, oh, they might be like deserted batteries that aren't going to be used anymore. So, well, I've definitely started thinking about my actions more and how it affects other people mm -hmm. rather than just what I want and what's best for me. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been thinking about like not getting into trouble and trying to find an actual career so that I don't go back to court because it wasn't. Nice experience. Okay, and who do you think are the victims? I think the victims are Mr. Roberts for one, and then my mum because she's not had to pay for court costs. She's had to come to these meetings, which obviously she wouldn't have had to. And then like everyone else who's here, because obviously if I didn't do the crime, then you lot wouldn't be here speaking to me now. So. So you feel like you've had a lot of time to reflect back on yeah. what's happened, yeah. And do you know how Mum feels? Yes. You've spoken to Mum about it. She expressed that, yes. Yeah? What did she say? She just says that she's disappointed because obviously she didn't think that I'd be like, doing stuff like that when I'm not at home. So. How does that make you feel? Your mum being disappointed, didn't you? No, it's not a good feeling, obviously. But I'm trying to make amends by doing like jobs and stuff around the house, so, yeah. Okay. And of course the main victim in your offence is of course Tom Roberts, who has come here today to speak to you. So, can I just ask what impact this has had on you in your business? It's, it's the principle behind it, and the fact that, you know, why should somebody come into my yard and, and take what belongs to me? Um, you know, they're mine. And uh, with this scrap is collected, and uh, it's part of our garage income when it's sold, when we've gathered enough together. And you know, young guys like this don't have the right to, to walk in and help themselves to it. Also, I have the police coming to my uh, premises to, to sort the things out and make statements and everything, CCTV to go through. 
It's all time and time is money attending here today. It's all time and, you know, time's money. Okay, so, John, you've, you've heard what Thomas had to say. How does that make you feel? Do you have a better understanding? Uh, yeah, like, well, now obviously I regret doing it, seeing, like, what harm it's caused to the other people. When I did it, I didn't think, oh, yeah, this guy will get, like, annoyed because he's got to come here. And, you know what I mean? I just thought, oh, it's a quick bit of money. But now I know, like, how other people can, I, I, I know that I won't, like, do anything like this again. Mm -hmm. And do you think there's anything you can do to kind of put back the harm you've caused? Well, I could, I was thinking I could go down to Mr. Robert's garage if he knew all that and, like, you know, say, like, clean some cars or, you know what I mean, I'd just help out a bit just to, so that that sort of balances it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's certainly something we'll explore when we're putting together a contract in it and we'll, we'll talk to the other officers um, about the idea of, of helping Mr. Yes. Well, on that, on that subject, can I ask you, John, I know you're, you're at school, and I also notice you're at college doing some sort of construction work. What, what does that entail? I'm only trying to think of something that might be useful for Mr. Roberts. Uh, construction's really like building with the bricks and stuff like that. It's not really anything to do with cars, but i got like a good like manual labour sort of thing, so I don't mind like getting my hands dirty. Right. So. So you'd be happy to sort of do yeah, yeah, it's, sort of it's, not, it's not a problem. So. Okay. I'm just um, on the reparation aspect because the conversation is going to take place after we've left the room, Mr. Roberts, about reparation with this young man. What's your views on um, um, doing some direct reparation for you? Have you got any views on that? Um, if he, this young man would like to come down and do some work for us, we can find some things for him to do. There may not be the pleasantest of jobs. But, yes, we find him something to do, some cars to wash and sweep, you know. Um, maybe even sorting some scrap out for us. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steve, for coming along. Um, we'll just ask you to leave the room now so we can so, yeah. speak to John. So John, we've explored what's happened and um, what impact it's had on the victims. Should we, should we just explore you and how it's affected you and, and how we can move forward? Uh, well, I think that maybe because I, I don't really want to go back to school next year because I don't really like it. I was thinking we could um, try find something that I'm like, interested in, like the construction, so maybe if... I could get an apprenticeship somewhere or something like that. It could help me find one of them. Because I think that if I get something that I really want to focus on and I really like, then it'll just... Like, I won't be wanting to offend anymore because I'll have something that I want to keep and obviously if I offend again, I won't be able to do it. So. Mm -hmm. Would you say you've got um, a tendency for impulse and, and not really thinking of consequences? Just, is that something that happens? Yeah. To be fair, yeah, like, even like, I can't explain it, but like, there's a few examples of where I've just done something, and it might not be like, as serious as this, but it's like, I've done something without thinking, then afterwards I'm like, oh, shouldn't have done that. But like, it can be even stuff like just around the house, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he means any harm, he's just daft. He doesn't think, he just thinks about himself. That is his main trouble, he just thinks about himself and what he wants, when he wants it. But he doesn't mean any harm, and he's always sorry after he's done something, but he's getting a bit too old for that. Yeah, I think, you know, as part of this contract, as part of the referral order, we'll definitely put something in there about kind of consequential thinking and, and how, you know, to reduce offending in the future, and just to think about things before you do them. Okay, how do you feel about giving Mr Roberts an apology, maybe face-to-face uh, -face or writing a letter? Yeah, I think, I think that's fine. Maybe not writing a letter because I, I think I'm better with words than I am with like, writing, so I'd rather do it straight to his face. But yeah, I think that could be good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll put that in the contract for you to do. And, and maybe if we do some reparation with Mr Roberts, the, 
Maybe yeah, I think you should. I think if you've, you've taken something from him, you should go down and work for him. That's, that's how it should be. Yeah. Okay. You got any questions? Yeah, John, just, just a couple of things, John. Obviously, your mother's very supportive here today because she's here with you today. Can you tell me something about your brother and sisters? Uh, well, I've got a younger brother, mm -hmm. and obviously, he's not as old as me and doesn't, like, not sort of as equipped, so mum has to spend more time with him than she does me, so sometimes I feel like a bit left out, that's, that's sometimes why I do stupid stuff like this, but not all, like, I'm not saying that I blame it on my mum, because she's looking after the little kids, but you know what I mean, sometimes it just feels like you're being left out. So. Is your father aware of what's happened? Uh, yeah, my father's been told, he's supportive. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything that you feel more that we could do some work in any areas? I think he he needs to get himself straightened out. He needs to get a job. Uh, he can't get a job just yet, but when he finishes school, he needs to get a job. Um, I know it's hard with me having the other kids, but. He's quite a good ladder, and he does help. Um, helps when he can, and then he forgets himself and goes out and does something stupid. I, I, you know, I don't like them guys that you hang around with, those mates that the ones that you were with. I, th I don't know why you bother with them. They just get you into more and more trouble. Yeah. What other things are you interested in? What other things are you interested in? I uh, like playing football. I used to play that quite a lot. You don't play anymore. No. I no, well, that's because you hang around with them. You should do. Do you think peer pressure is an issue? Do you think people are, you're affected by people around you? It's not really yes, but no. It's like it's not really peer pressure. Like they're not coming up to me and going yeah yeah, and I'm like no no, like forcing me to do it. It's just like sort of like an old rounder idea, if you know what I mean. So just because you don't think, yeah, you just think you'll go off with them. What we're looking here is at the risk issues, the, the reasons that you might get involved in turning a gang. Now, um, Becky, I think, has talked about the impulsivity, doing things without thinking. Um, but the other thing is a lack of assertiveness, a lack of your ability to say no to your friends when they want to do something you know is a bit stupid. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think we want to be putting that, that in the context as well. Mm -hmm. And then we were talking about you, you know, your jobs and finding a job and maybe something else to do. Um, there's a, also a voluntary element within the contract where we can put things in, maybe helping with your CV, maybe doing, you know, going to the, to the job centre or to whoever to, to look at other things. So maybe that's something we could put in your contract. Yeah, that sounds, sounds yeah? good. John, while we've all been talking, I've been writing the, the contract so we don't waste any time. Um, it's important to remember that your order effectively starts today. Now you have freely negotiated the contract with us around the table. But once you've signed it, you are bound by it and you must keep the terms of it strictly. And if you don't, we do have a warning process, but ultimately, if you don't keep it, you will come back to the panel or you'll have to give an account for yourself. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, the purpose of the contract is two part. It's firstly to agree reparation to the victim. And we have done that by saying that you're going to apologise to the victim face to face and you're going to do some work for him in his yard. Yeah. Okay. Now, the second part of it is we've looked at the risks, the reasons why you might get into trouble again. And we have decided amongst ourselves that they are going to be your impulsivity, your lack of self-control if you like, um, some negative peer pressure and the lack of constructive things to do with your time. So what we've agreed to put in the contract are things to counteract those things that affect you. Yeah? You understand? Yeah. So you're going to do firstly one-to-one -one work on your consequential thinking skills. That's thinking through what you're going to do before you do it. And you're going to do that with your 
case officer who is Becky. Yeah. Secondly, you're going to do some work on helping you resist peer pressure. That's assertiveness, basically being able to say no to your friends. Okay. Um, and thirdly, that we'd like to put in the contract is for you to do some job searches with Rebecca, who's your case officer, with a view to getting some work. Okay. Now, if you're happy with that, I'm going to ask you to sign the contract, for your mum to sign it as well, and for Becky as the chair to sign it on behalf of the panel here. Okay? Yes. Right. Very, very positive. Um, you've attended all of you, agreed supervision, employment, and you've done three days of reparation. Do you want to expand and tell me what you've been doing? Uh, in the meetings with Rebecca, I was doing consequential thinking, so she made me like, like weigh out my options before I actually do actions. and So I think that's helped me a lot, because I haven't been into trouble since. Brilliant. We also had uh, discussions about my impulsiveness. Mm -hmm which has made me less impulsive. So I think that's really benefited. And it's like, obviously I don't just think about myself now, you know, I think about others and how they feel. And with the reparation, uh, I, at first I was cleaning cars and I was like sweeping up and you know what I mean, just like the general stuff. Then I started like sorting scrap out and I think Mr. Roberts thought I was a good little help, so he, put me some additional work on it and now I get paid for working there. Brilliant, brilliant. So is that, have you been able to speak to, to Mr Roberts about what's happened? Uh, yeah, I, like before I went and did any reparation I went down and apologised to him face to face and just like said that I am sorry for all these inconveniences because he had to come to like the panel meeting and you know I mean he had to go to the police station and stuff like that as well I think so. Does that make you feel good? Or? Yeah, when he like he accepted it, it was like, oh, yeah, thank you. Like he was like, oh, yeah, it means a lot. So it yeah it made me feel better to know that I've actually done something. Excellent. Like so how does Mum feel? There's been change. I think he's I think he's grown up a lot. I think it's made um, a lot of difference. He did take it seriously. He didn't like going to court. I didn't like going to court, but um, I think he. It's been good for him, and he's he's not got into any trouble since he's been he's been fine at home. Um, he's finished school now. I think he's learnt his lesson really. John, really well done. This is a good report. Rebecca's really enjoyed working for you. She describes you as respectful in sessions, open to discussing your behaviour, and a thoughtful young person. We're really pleased the way you handled this order. Well Thank done. you. Well done.